Well, there's three fundamental attributes about the gas that we think are important for the market to understand. First, it's fundamentally cleaner. The environmental footprint of how we make our gas and the ultimate end use of the gas, fundamentally environmentally cleaner than anything else on the market today. Second, it's safer. It's scientifically proven that our gas, even under high compression, is far more safe for workers to use on a daily basis. Uh, this is a very real issue that's dear to our hearts. The, the number two leading cause of death from an from a industry category in the United States is working with industrial metal fuels and industrial gases in general. So for us, safety is paramount, and it's one of the main, main reasons why companies adopt our product. Last, it's smarter. It's a technology that's disruptive. It makes the user more than 50% faster when they're cutting. They can finally cut through things that they couldn't possibly dream of cutting with alternative products. And the end effect when cut eliminates almost 100% of the post-cut labor by the end user. So we absolutely think that the fundamental things about our gas that are meaningful today and make people use our gas, it's cleaner, it's safer, and it's smarter. That's an excellent question. The, the main reason why this company was formed was to take some of the most harmful waste streams out in the market and try to convert them to something more usable, less harmful, and ultimately beneficial to uh, the society around the waste stream. So we were very fortunate that about 18 months ago, we won a USDA grant to fund the validation of our technology for the use with farm applications, basically taking animal waste streams and eliminate all the harmful attributes of those waste streams and basically make that waste something that can be used for gainful commercial purposes. We've made an enormous amount of progress. In fact, in the first six months after our initial phase of our study, uh, the USDA was so pleased with the progress we made that they invited us to attend the 73rd Annual uh, International Water and Soil Conservation Society's conference in Albuquerque. And at that uh, event, we unveiled our results so far. And we're very pleased that, to say that we've made even further progress and we'll be excited to give the market an update shortly on where we're taking that technology over the next six to 12 months. So it's an interesting thing to think about waste to energy. A lot of people think you're taking something like trash and converting that directly into electricity. For us, the way we think about it is we're finding types of products that contain three critical things, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Hydrocarbons are just a mixture of those three atoms. So for us, we're looking for industrial waste streams that have those in plenty and can be readily transformed from a waste into some sort of a synthetic gas. So one of the biggest updates that we would like to, uh, to unfold in the near term is we're going to gradually shift away from primary feedstock that we use today, which is it's 100% renewable. It comes from corn, so it's butanol. It's a wonderful gas that we make from that product, but where we see the future in the near term is to shift to ethanol. Ethanol is commonly a waste stream used in almost all of your major medical applications. So pharmaceutical waste, hospital waste, it's, it's something that's basically very difficult to get rid of, and it's pervasive. For us, it makes a beautiful fuel source. And so we look at that and say that's a major catalyst towards moving further and further towards waste to energy concepts. And we think we'll be using ethanol as our primary feedstock within six months. We think that the, the acquisition strategy may seem ambitious, but we see it as logical, manageable, and repeatable. So we took three years prudently to determine that our proprietary product in Florida could sell through an acquisition. So we did one at the end of 2014, and over three, three years thereafter, we grew our company 20 times faster than the industry should. We then looked at that and said, well, why wouldn't we replicate that success by doing the exact same thing we've done well over the last three years in bigger, better markets? So we've just gradually been very prudent about finding the best possible opportunities to expand and add to our team by finding good, smart, cash-flowing, profitable, scalable businesses in Texas and in California. Those are the two biggest markets for our product and the two biggest markets in our industry in the United States. And we've been very pleased that over the last 15 months, we've now made seven acquisitions and we are rapidly approaching becoming a top five competitor in both markets. Our goal is to become a top three competitor and be one of the most meaningful independent competitors in those two markets within the next three years. Does that mean we'll make a lot of acquisitions? Potentially. But alternatively, you could look at it another way and say, 
in just one year, we've grown from having 3,000 customers to 30,000 customers. We already have an enormous opportunity with the people that work with us every single day. If we do a good job of taking care of them, word of mouth will enable us to continue to grow without necessarily having to acquire everybody else on the street. But if everyone else wants to join our team, we'd consider it. We just made an acquisition of one of the largest independent distributors in East Texas. We're very pleased to say that we're now the dominant independent in that region, and we intended to leverage the team we've added, the customers we've expanded into, and the necessary infrastructure to begin launching our gas production capabilities in East Texas by the end of Q2.